guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today we need to talk about the disastrous 4-8-0 and zero Ottawa Senators, a team that has had a horrible start to the season and a team that could have some major changes throughout the entire franchise and the entire roster. But as the Sens look to turn the tide, what moves could we make, what trades could end up happening, and will we see moves in the front office as well as the management? Watch till the end for all the trade rumors and all the latest news and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more hockey content just like this 50% of you guys aren't subscribed so if you like hockey content this channel is the place to be now let's get straight into the breakdown with this Ottawa Sanders team and just the horrible start that they have had to the season you look at the league-wide standings Vegas at the top of things but then you have to scroll all the way down to 30th overall where the Sens have a 480 record eight points a three point or 0.333 points percentage and among the worst teams in the entire league you look only only St. Louis and Columbus are behind them, with the Sens playing 12 games up at this point too. About as bad as a, as a start as you could hope for, for a Sens team that was looking to get into the playoffs for the first time with this core. I mean, that was the expectation. Whether you thought that was going to happen or not, that's what this Sens team wanted to accomplish, and yet it's another slow start for a team that desperately needed to not have one. And it's even more dire when you look at the divisional standpoints. And when you look at Boston, Detroit, Toronto, Tampa Bay, Florida, Buffalo, Montreal, every single team besides Buffalo is at least at an NHL 500 mark. Even Montreal, with their 6-6-1 record, has 13 points in 13 games. They are five points above the Sens right now. And when you have the Montreal Canadiens, this Montreal Canadiens team five points above you, it's not exactly going to paint some great success. And for the Sens, we've seen how bad of a situation they're in. Already, they're in a horrible spot. And even now, even though there's so much of the season left, getting out of this hole is no short task. And to put into perspective just how similar it's been compared to other years for the Sens, this is a good tweet by James Creighton saying, DJ Smith's first 15 games as head coach over the last three seasons. In 2021, a 2-12-1 record. In 2022, we got a little bit better, but still 4, 10, and 1. And then this year, in 2023, through 12 games, has a 4, 8, and 0 record. Again, for a Sens franchise that wanted to be different, wanted to compete, wanted to be a playoff team, you simply can't afford to have these type of starts. Then some more interesting tweets, this time by Locked On Senators, saying, Under DJ Smith, the Sens record when trailing after two periods is 7, 86, and 11. You obviously can't expect a positive record in that situation, but seven wins in 104 games is wild. In 2017, the Sens had six wins in 45 games when trailing after two. So again, some more things that with DJ, DJ Smith's time with Ottawa hasn't been all too amazing. Then you have this last one, and this one is even a little bit old. The Sanders are 0-6-0 when Nikita Zaitsev is in the lineup this season, and they are 4-1-0 with him as a scratch. Now, this is an old one because this was before their loss to the Vancouver Canucks where Nikita Zaitsev was in the lineup. So now it is 0-7-0 when Nikita Zaitsev is in the lineup for Ottawa. And to be honest, it's kind of DJ Smith's fault in a way for always putting in Nikita Zaitsev. Now obviously there's been some inconsistencies with the defense as a whole for Ottawa, but... It's not exactly a great indicator of success for Zaitsev. And to me, when I look at the results and the expectations of all teams this year, to me, there is no coach out there that is more likely to get canned right now than DJ Smith. And I think he knows his job is on the line. We've seen some intensity, of course, in these last couple of games. But really, if we're talking about expectations league-wide, there were very few teams that wanted to make as big of a jump as the Ottawa Senators and as big of a jump in the standings as the Sens. And DJ DJ Smith was looked at as a coach that has done a fine job, I guess, in his time with Ottawa, but this was the year to truly prove himself and with the team prove themselves too, and this was the year to truly make that big jump, or at least be in the playoff compete level, be at round 95 points, be in the race for the playoffs, somewhat be in there, but the Sens have been anything but, and have been the worst team in the Atlantic this year, which going into it, I thought was practically impossible. 
And to me, I went back and specifically watched a couple of Sens games over this last week, and it just feels like for Ottawa, that lack of compete has started to kind of dwindle in their play, or at least just a little bit of stagnation in their play, especially when it comes to the defense and specifically Nikita Zaitsev. Him being in the lineup just feels weird to me. It feels weird that DJ Smith would practically stake his entire reputation and his entire job on Nikita Zaitsev being in the lineup when it's obviously not working for this defense core and there have been some problems to be out of his control. The goaltending hasn't been amazing, but simply put, the team hasn't been coached right. They just haven't. And there's been times where you've seen Derek Broussard be the second line center instead of Tim Stutzla and some weird other scenarios like that, or instead of Shane Pinto, my bad. Uh, but other weird scenarios like that. And to me, it just feels like he's trying a bunch of things, yet not able to work everything out. And especially with this team, even though I don't think they're a Stanley Cup contender by any means, I still think they should be way better than they are right now. And I think if the Sens fire DJ Smith, I would not be totally against it. And that's the thing. Nobody blames DJ Smith for not co coaching a playoff team over these last three seasons. But this year was the year to show some signs of difference, some signs of improvement. And they've been worse in some ways. And that to me is unacceptable for how much this Sens franchise has wanted to change, how much Pierre Dorian ha had done in the offseason. Yes, that defense is still horrible, but at the same time, they should be better, simply put no excuses. Now here's the thing too, I do feel like with Pierre Dorian there also is some things that kind of go against him, obviously for one Josh Norris being injured, that's not something anybody can control, but their center situation looks a lot worse because of it, as well as not having Alex Fermentin signed, that's going to put a little bit of a damper on the forward group, but it's still a solid forward group all things considered. But then you go on to the defense, and to me I always said for Ottawa, if they never made a big change to the defense, I never saw them making the playoffs this year. And I would have loved to be wrong, but to me, that's kind of been the biggest issue with this Sens team is that defense and what we've seen so far and, and the consistency and lack thereof, really, of that decor. I mean, specifically Thomas Shabbat, he has not been up to snuff at all this year. He had one of his better games, I would say, versus Vancouver, I guess, but he has not been what he's needed to be. He has not been that number one amazing defenseman, especially this season, that Ottawa really wanted to see. Thankfully for them, Jake Sanderson has been great as a rookie and fundamentally sound, but I just think if, if Ottawa didn't have Sanderson playing as well as he did, this would be in contention for being maybe one of the worst, if not the worst, defense court in the league right now. It has been that bad, and especially defensively. I mean, this defense can still put up points, but defensively, that is easily the biggest issue and there was nothing in the offseason that was made to alleviate that problem or even focus in on it nothing to change that defense and to me i saw it as a mistake i didn't think it would hurt them as much as it has already but we've seen the problems that the roster has already had showing its face so far and then you also have the goaltending. You, of course, have Magnus Helberg, who had a great first game at a 935 save percentage, but then he got both Anton Forsberg and Cam Talbot below a 900 save percentage, both as well below league average and goals saved above expected. Specifically when it comes to Anton Forsberg, I think he's been relatively disappointing. I didn't think he'd have a Vesna type year, but I thought he was pretty underrated last season, and this year, we just haven't seen the same type of consistency from him, and you see a 3.58 goals against average and an 898 save percentage. Simply not good enough. And even though that defense being as bad as it has been has not helped whatsoever, the goaltending hasn't exactly saved them like a Carter Hart is doing in Philadelphia, for example. And that's been a big reason why they have just been so bad. Now, I also wanted to share this tweet from Jason York that I thought was interesting. A lot of heat on DJ Smith right now, but Dorian needs to own some of this too. Glaring mistakes once again from blue line he did not address in the offseason. Doesn't matter how good the forwards are, you can't win in this league consistently without a good decor. And I absolutely 110% agree with this. Even though I would say still a lot of the blame should be on DJ Smith, Dorian not making any moves on the defense was going to hurt them. And we've seen how, especially with the goaltending statistics and, and how that defense has affected them, we've seen already the difference it has made in that Atlantic division. I mean, again, to be five points below the Montreal Canadiens, it really has to be horrible. It really has to be a bad situation. But that defense has been as bad as, bad as you 
could ever see. And again, if Jake Sanderson wasn't at his top at the top of his game, it would be much worse too. So for me, I think with the Sens, if they really want to make the playoffs, they want to get back in that position, if they want to not be a bottom feeder team, I think a move needs to be made. Now, going on on what moves the Ottawa Senators could potentially make, besides, of course, firing DJ Smith, I think adding a right defenseman is necessary for this squad. Now, Artem Zub will likely be coming back in the next couple weeks, and that is huge for them, but I still think they would likely have to make a move out on top of that to really uh, really ice a much better defense and a sizable one, too. One name that I think really strikes me personally, going for a team that is in the down of the dumps right now and could stand to make a move on the defense, is Andrew Peak. Now, to me, I think he He's one of the more underrated defensive defensemen out there now on a horrible defensive Columbus team, which is one reason why they might not want to trade him, but he's fairly young at 24 years old, just got an extension around 2.75. Let me just get what he is specifically. Yeah, right now he's going to make 2.75. He makes 787 this year, 878K, and then he makes 2.75 million for the next three seasons after that. So he's locked up for a pretty sizable term, and you look at the statistics, he's not an offensive defenseman, but can still put up points when he needs to 15 points in 82 games last year but the defensive part of things he's six foot three really uses his body well and I think for the Sens on that right side that is huge for them getting somebody that can just be responsible doesn't even have to worry about anything offensively can just be in his role is exactly what the Sens drastically need and I just gotta say, as much as I do like Jacob Bernard Docker, I don't think that right side is going to get it done, even when Zub is entered into the lineup. And that's the thing for the Sens. They have $3.2 million of cap space to work with. So for just this season, they would be easily able to bring on a peak and even add more players on top of that if they really needed to. And that's where that cap space does come into play. It's obvious that they were built to maybe make one more move. And I don't think Chikorin is going to be the guy that gets it done and we've seen how the Sens are not going to abide by the asking price that the Coyotes want with Shane Pinto being one that the Coyotes are really seeking so to me I think the Sens going after a much more interesting option in, in peak and a much much less uh, expensive option is what the Sens should do right now you keep that 2023 first as much as you can but again I feel like that defensive ad is what they need right now and of course I haven't even talked about the Ryan Reynolds situation with him to buy the Ottawa Senators, him going to the game versus Vancouver, cheering the Sens on. I mean, if Ryan Reynolds and another big person ends up buying the Ottawa Senators, that would be so fun to see. But I am hoping for the Sens team that they do get better. I mean, they were one of the teams that I was most excited to watch this year and have been just a relatively disappointing, just slob uh, uh, of inconsistency. So I am hoping for the Sens that we see them get a lot better, a lot more consistent. Hopefully when Zub comes back, that'll be a huge change onto that defense but again I feel like for the Sens big changes should be coming and this will be a big test for Pierre Dorian can he come up to the test can he make this team better when they really need it because right now I think changes need to happen but that'll be it for today guys thank you so much for tuning into this breakdown if you did enjoy hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell comment down below if you were the Ottawa Senators what would you do would you fire DJ Smith would you keep him what would you make big trades onto the roster would you keep everything the same let us know down below. Of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and of course, share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. Click this car for all the training work content, run one playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.